Welcome to our lecture online. One of the ways in which we can measure the surface tension of water is to build this strange contraption. We have a piece of cork. The density of the cork is less than the density of water. We attach a wire on both sides. We poke it into the cork and then we build a ring that we attach to the two wires. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take that cork and the wire and place it underneath the water surface of a container and then we we'll let it float up because the buoyancy force and we we'll let the wire push up against the water the, the surface of the water and we want to find the point just before it breaks through the surface itself so that surface tension is preventing the wire from going through the surface of the water then we can measure or from that figure out the surface tension of the water now in this case since we already know the surface tension of the water we're going to find out what the size of the ring needs to be in order to just stay below the surface of water. It's kind of a water bug in reverse. You know, water bugs can walk on the water. Well, you can actually keep things from breaking through the water from underneath because of the surface tension. And that's what we're going to solve. We're going to solve for the radius of the ring. R equals question mark. How big does that ring need to be so that it will stay below the water surface? So notice we have uh, a little bit of uh, forces here. We have the buoyancy force pushing up the cork. We have the surface tension pushing down. And of course, we also have the weight of the cork that's pushing down as well. And if everything is in equilibrium and the surface tension is large enough, then it will not break through the surface. So what we're going to need here is we're going to need an equation where all the forces up must equal all the forces down. So the buoyancy force pushing up must equal to the weight of the cork plus the surface tension, the force of the surface tension, like that. All right, buoyancy force. Well, that's going to be equal to the density times the volume times G of the displaced liquid equals the weight of the cork. That would be, well, we're given the mass so we can figure out the weight, mg, plus the force caused by the surface tension, which is going to be the coefficient of the surface tension times the length times the cosine of the angle. Now in this case, I believe we're going to let theta equal zero degrees, because you see that the water level goes right up to the wire like that. And because of that, the cosine of zero, of course, is going to be one. Now let's go ahead and plug in everything that we know. And that means um, over here we have the density uh, of the liquid. Hmm. I'm going to work this out a little bit more without plugging any numbers in. So density times volume times G of the liquid equals the weight of the cork plus the surface tension times the length of contact. But notice the wire has an inside contact and an outside contact, so we have to take twice the circumference of the wire. So it'll be 2 times uh, 2 pi r squared. 2 pi r, not, not squared twice the circumference, which is 2 pi r. Kind of got confused with all those twos. So it's two times the length around the wire. The length around the wire is going to be 2 pi r times 2 times that times 1 because the cosine of 0 is equal to 1. Now we have to solve that for r. So that means we have 4 pi surface tension times r is equal to rho vg of the displaced liquid minus the weight of the cork and then finally we can see that r is going to be equal to the density volume g times the liquid minus mg all divided by okay what we have left here is 4 pi times the surface tension now there's one more thing we don't know oh no we do know we knew we do know the volume of the cork so we're all set. Let's plug in the numbers and see what we get. Density of the liquid, 1 gram per cubic centimeter. The volume of the displaced liquid is the same as the volume of the cork, 7 cubic centimeters. And then G and CGS units, which is 980 centimeters per second square. We subtract from that the weight, which is minus the mass, which is 3.5 grams times G, which is 980 centimeters per second squared. So that's the weight of the cork. Then we divide that by 4 pi 
times the surface tension, which is 72 dynes per centimeter. There we go. And that should give us the radius required on the cork. Now I'm looking for my calculator. It's hiding here. All right. So we have uh, 7 times 980 minus 3.5 times 980. Divide that by 4, divide that by pi, and divide that by 72 equals, and that gives me 3.79 centimeters. So the radius equals 3.79 centimeters, and that radius will make the wire just big enough so that the surface tension will keep it from breaking through. In a way, that's one way we could measure the surface tension by changing the size of the wire or changing the size of the cork so that we find just the limit before it breaks through. And that's how we could potentially measure the surface tension. And that is how it's done.